Hey everybody, how you doing? Today I wanted to talk about cutting a tree down for taper. This tree is a trident maple. Uh, usually we do these cuts about a week ago or two weeks ago, just before they start sprouting. We had a real heavy rain and everything busted out like crazy. Um, so we need to act fast. Uh, now that it's starting to uh, grow, you're gonna get some weepage, but if we wait too much longer, you can't do a big cut like this. This particular tree, um, I've had personally since 98, uh, grew it in a pot its whole life. That's why the trunk is smaller. Last year we did an uh, approach graft to sh just to show how it was done, um, but it wasn't a great tree. If you look at this, it has this great base, but no taper. Uh, we could have carved this down and then grow it f for a while, but it would have to go out of a pot um, to really develop it correctly. Um, Actually, it should go into a larger pot um, once this cut is done to help it roll over and to grow uh, for taper, but I wanted to show you how to do it. Uh, as you're growing most trees that are apically dominant, you're always um, growing them uh, to have the tops, that you know, knowing that the tops are going to thicken up faster than the bottom sections. So the apexes are always going to have to be periodically replaced. If you're growing a tree for taper and you have no taper here, uh, a couple ways we can fix that is by having sacrificials below that line to grow or we can cut it back and regrow it. I'm a big fan of real extreme taper, especially on trident maples. So uh, I have a five year plan in my head on how I'm gonna make this into a, tr a sweet little tree. Um, and one of the ways I'm gonna do it is by shortening this considerably and basically starting from scratch. Um, I could air layer these, this uh, piece, but it doesn't, these don't air layer that well. And I do have a, a, about 500 tridents currently at the shop. So I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, I'm gonna cut this off and show you what it looks like in just a minute. Okay, so he cut the top off. Um, this is the tree this little guy down here. The only reason why I did a big cut this large on this trident maple is because there's a little bud that was here. See it down there? Um, this will actually be cut over to the bud. If you don't have a bud on the opposite end of any deciduous tree, sometimes what'll happen is with a cut this large, it'll die right down into the ground. Um, so we leave, make sure that there's a bud there so sap can continue to flow and also we can have a back branch or a first branch depending on where my new front is. Um, next I'm going to come in here and cut this and then smooth the edge with the blade um, along the edge so I don't have a jagged edge and then I'm going to seal it. So what I did is I cut this with, so it has a smooth transition. And I also cut the edge with the um, blade so we don't have any rough cuts. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is seal it with some cut paste. There's a lot of different um, statements online about what kind of paste to use or if any paste is necessary. I'll tell you that a large cut like this, um, I hit it first with a little bit of Lysol, water, 50-50 and then I put the cut paste on top of it. It seems to um, stop any rot. It gives a chance to um, roll over. If this stops rolling over in two years, um, I cut it again uh, where there can be a fresh and I reseal it. Uh, it does a pretty good job of continuing it to roll over until it's completely healed or at, at least until it's just about healed and then two years later I can do it again. So if you look, you can see we have nice movement. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.